This is Cinematic Suffering, where we watch every movie streaming on Netflix from A to Z. For better or worse, life is pain, and so are bad horror movies. Okay, welcome back, everybody, to Cinematic Suffering. This is episode five, and we will be reviewing 47 Meters Down. Should we tell them a little bit about Cinematic Suffering, just in case it's their first episode? Well, first of all, let's tell them who we are. Your name is Jason. That's correct, and your name is Clay. That's it. That's the two of us. We are doing 47 meters down. It's like Jason said, it's the fifth film in our alphabetical rundown of the Netflix horror movies. So this movie was released in 2017, directed by Johannes Robert and written by Johannes Roberts and Ernest Riera. Uh, it stars Australian actress Claire Holt and American songwriter of Bland Entertainment, Mandy Moore. <laughs> Yeah, and the reason I, I, I say just for new listeners, because 47 Meters Down is probably the most popular we've reviewed so far, because it is kind of a bigger film. It's telling of the taste of American audiences that this <laughs> thing is popular, but that's kind of, I, I get into this too early in the reviews, but yeah. Yeah, I think we're going to differ just a little bit on our reviews here, because... Probably, uh, yeah, I... You know, I'll say right off the bat, let me just, my caveat is that I went into this with an un, like, fair amount of, of vitriol because <laughs> we had just gotten done watching 1920 London, and I loved that movie. It was, I came off, I was all giddy, it was, it was fun, <laughs> and I went right into 40 meters down. I needed to decompress between the two, no pun intended. No pun intended, I was about to say. Yeah. Okay, so 47 meters down is a movie... Th- Hold on, what, how do I really want to start this? <laughs> I, What's a shark movie is the, the easiest way to kind of sum it up. There's, there's some things that went on behind the scenes with 47 Meters Down because at the time, that other shark movie, it was another PG-13 shark movie that came out called The Shallows, was coming around around the same time. And this movie was originally supposed to just be released on video or straight to you know streaming or whatever people look at now. But when they saw the cash and bucks that The Shallow was bringing in, they... They renamed it 47 Meters Down and shot it out to a theatrical release. That's right. And a hero (laughs) swooped in to save the day. This wart-riddled hero uh, is none other than Jabba the Hutt. Sorry, I mean Harvey Weinstein. This is a Weinstein production. (laughs) This is a Weinstein production before his horrific uh, crimes were found out or at least made public. Yes, he. uh, it's got to be kind of awkward for everybody involved now because as you're watching the movie that's the first thing that you learn from this movie is a it's pg-13 and b it's a weinstein production it's got two strikes going for it right off the bat well, yeah that's kind of how i felt I, I i i found myself immediately thinking whatever i think of this movie You know, I have to have some empathy for the lead actresses because they had to see Harvey's awful, wart-riddled penis. (laughs) And no one should have to go through that. That man is vile. Right. Okay, off Jack of Wine scene then. We have two strikes already against it. We have a PG-13 shark movie, which is already kind of, for the hardcore horror guys and gals, it's kind of already putting a lot of people off when it comes to that. Yeah, most uh, horror fans, the big thing that turns you off with the PG-13 designation is the uh, is the lack of any actual horror. You you can pretty much guarantee if you're a, if you're a horror fan, a genuine horror fan, that you're not going to be scared, you're not going to be on edge, you're not going to see any bone smashing, gristle tearing gore. <laughs> no, unfortunately, there was no gristle tearing gore, and I, I did kind of miss those parts. But I will say, I there were some tension filled scenes and. We'll go along with it. And by the way, I should just throw out another reminder. This is not a spoiler-free movie. This is spoiler, 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 and we're going to go to the end. Yeah, we're going to tell you the <laughs> we're going to tell you the whole thing. If you don't want to watch it, just just listen to our lovely voices, and you'll you'll uh, get the gist of the movie. Well, like we said, this is a PG thirteen feature, and we should go ahead and just start uh, where the movie starts, which is basically a underwater scene where we see the seabed with some rocks strewn about and sand and the camera kind of turns up and then we see a person lounging in a, a I guess a what do you call it a, a floaty device <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm very it's, like te- the, it's a classic upskirt jaws uh, motif yes <laughs> yes what we're greeted with 
It's not. And there's a, a there's some ominous foreshadowing as as a cup of Merlot spills into the pool. Ooh. Yeah. And the uh, you see the Merlot, the red Merlot, kind of mixing with the pool water, uh, indicating what's going to come next. Uh, I will say that this beginning part was very low key. I I didn't really care about. That Lisa ha- apparently has a boyfriend that she's very close with, and her sister Kate. Lisa is played by Mandy Moore, Mandy Moore, and Kate is played by that other girl. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was her name? Claire Holt. Claire and, Holt. Uh, yeah. So uh, this this kind of confused me. They are sisters, or they're best friends because they had best friend energy. Well, they are sisters. Because, they are sisters because later on we learned that. Mandy broke up. I say Mandy. Let me let me address my character name. <laughs> Lisa broke up with Stuart, her boyfriend, which we never see. And which is here's a little more, more trivia for you. Was originally filmed with James Vanderbeek as the boyfriend, but they cut all those scenes out. Oh man, I I would have enjoyed it about ten percent more if Vanderbeek was in it. <laughs> he is a he's a hero of mine as well. <laughs> <laughs> but we learned the what I was saying that. She learns that her boyfriend broke up with her, and he's moving out, and then Kate comes out to console her, and then she, Kate asks Lisa, well, does mom know? So, that's... Oh, okay, yeah. okay. I'm, 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 yeah, I'm glad that we confirmed that, because that was bugging me, because, you know, and it, it's a telling problem with this movie in general. Like, I, as I mentioned, I went into this with an un, maybe an unfair amount of, of just... <laughs> just hated it right from the outset i decided i hated it right away and then i found i kept looking for reasons and finding them in abundance to hate the movie which i realized while i do that that i'm the asshole a little bit so i i realized that so when i shit all over this movie i just kind of uh admit that i'm kind of a dick about this no it's perfectly understandable and we're gonna have moments like this throughout this entire challenge that's, that's that's right. That's right. So we meet. Uh, what are their stupid names again? Kate and Lisa. We meet <laughs> the, meet these two prototypical white girls. And I'm gonna try to not say the b word too much. Yeah, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> and just know that when I say it, I'm speaking not to the fact that they're females, but to the fact that they're so thinly written. They we yeah. we. The the lead character, as you mentioned, brings out that she's here on this trip and she just came fresh off a breakup. And I sh- almost shouted at the TV, I don't care. I don't care about <laughs> you. I don't care about your boyfriend. And oddly, I didn't even know that that was Mandy Moore until I'd watched it and you told me. And I, I felt kind of dumb. But then I realized, well, I don't know who she is because I like better music than that and i'm not a sex offender well i only know mandy Moore. i I really don't know anything else she's done i i know she was on tv i think nickelodeon or something but i only know the name through just hearing it i i'm i don't really know of anything else she's in except i recognize the name in the movie and i've actually seen this movie before i watched it probably a year ago probably when it first came out on netflix when it was first started streaming and I remember not really paying that much attention to it, so I paid a little more attention to it this time instead of yeah. constantly walking away and making a sandwich to my last sentence. So. <laughs> I'm just checking Facebook and Instagram constantly while it plays in the background like a screensaver, like right. a pretty screensaver. But, um, okay, let's so let's dig into it. So we meet these two, and uh, the Lisa girl says, I've been on a breakup, I'm sad. And then the other white girl says, let's go on the town. And then we smash cut into them dancing and going woo and uh and then awful music is playing and i either feel old or just observant that this sucks god this is already boring and predictable but yeah and this musical cue uh even reminded me of 1920 or 1920 <laughs> london where they would jump into their musical kind of montages too this is just another version of that so i think this is another thing we need to look out for for all these movies <laughs> First we, music. Is is the music little is little music montages, little videos, you know, with the, the hip alternative track in the background and any strange locked doors that people can't open. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I feel like we're kind of unearthing esoteric secrets that these movies are telling us <laughs> because, I, you know, it, it is in some weird way we're kind of unraveling the secrets of, of movie storytelling. It, it's some kind of way to to shake a, a shiny object in front of the kittens <laughs> that are in the audience. Like, pay attention, pay attention. 
Oh, and they hit all the beats pretty much with this film when you come to when it comes to storytelling 101 or script writing. Yeah. You want your first act, your second act, and your third act, and you have them all, and they can all be pinpointed by the timestamp on the on the video. Yeah, there's nothing more disappointing than going into a shark movie and thinking this is going to I know exactly what's going to happen. It, you're t- it's a PG-13 shark movie starring Mandy Moore. You write it and then <laughs> you're going to get damn close by just following the predictable beats. Right, exactly. Um, so what we have here, they, they go out and party, they meet two guys. Uh, two local guys, and they mention, hey, instead of just hanging out by the beach or by the pool all during your vacation, why don't you come check out sharks? Why don't you swim with the sharks or get in a shark cage with us? It's really cool. Didn't it uh, kind of remind you of that uh, of the pivotal moment in your typical hostile kind of uh, murder porn yeah. movies? Yeah, it does, yeah. Yeah, like these handsome strangers, you know, are going to, you know, seduce you into your death. And in kind of a way, it, it follows that same, uh, you know, that, 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 that same formula, but not as directly. It does. It's, it, it's another, another thing of storytelling. I, I hate to keep throwing that out there, but it's pulling the characters out of their comfort zone and throwing them in some place into a foreign environment, whether it's another country, it's uh, under the water. Yeah, like let's get you let's let's get you land lovers onto the water number one, and uh, not to skip ahead too much, but we're going to chum these waters up so there's a lot of fins floating around. <laughs> uh, so they are invited to go on this, and uh, Lisa is hesitant about it. She's like, "No, no, I just broke up. I can't do this. It's too horrible. I can't go under the water like my adventurous younger sister Kate. How can I do that? What would Stuart think?" That's my Mandy Moore impression. Oh, it was spot on. Thank you. I thought she was in the room with us. I actually worked on that for a while. <laughs> <laughs> she sounds exactly like her, you know, and she's a, and you know, like, I, I feel like I should say that, uh, you know, like, having not known that this was Mandy Moore, I didn't have any animosity towards the actual actors in this. I was mad at the writers for giving them absolutely nothing to work with. That's kind of like that. That was how I thought about it through the whole thing. So they get seduced to go in and they're like, oh, we're going to go on an adventure. <laughs> it's like. It's it's like uh, it should have just been called white entitlement. <laughs> we're gonna go hang out in the in the shark's hood, and we're not gonna get bit because we're gonna be in a cage. Like ah, get get those white girls. So <laughs> they go to the boat and they meet our first our second celebrity <laughs> of the star-studded feature, being Matthew Modine. Yes, the, this is the quadruple M attack. Mandy Moore, Matthew Modine, M M M M. Uh, Eminem and Eminem. And uh, Matthew Modine obviously is here for a paycheck. You can see it in his face. His whole demeanor says it. And hilariously through the movie, he reinforces it. You can just see it on his face. He might as well have a T-shirt on that says, I'm here for the paycheck and the pussy. (laughs) (laughs) So they meet uh, Captain Taylor, which is Modine's character. And we also learn that Lisa's not a diver, so they kind of go around and they say oh well don't worry about it this is kind of an underground operation kind of operates above the level but also can operate below the level of the laws (laughs) we cut some corners here and there but don't you worry about that any and you can see that you know from the setup where they get in the shitty little dinghy to take a ride out to another shitty bigger boat which is covered (laughs) covered in rust and barnacles with a creepy fucking cabin boy uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised they weren't uh, beating the side of the communications and, and nautical equipment like Homer Simpson pounding on his television to get it to work. <laughs> Taylor knows that Lisa is not an experienced dive. She's never dived before, so he kind of goes through this whole rigmarole of what to do with the air tanks and you know blah, 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 and gives kind of like a basic rundown of what the instruments do. And then uh, the, the guys go down first that they're with and look at the sharks and they come back up and they quickly throw the girls into the shark cage. Uh, this is where I, I, I appreciated the movie a little bit more because that first whole opening scene didn't last too long. They kind of went from the really boring shit straight into the water. Yeah, they got us on the boat pretty quick. It was the same lesson that they learned with that most recent King Kong film. Like, we need to get to the island and see the monkey pretty quick. So they, you could tell that there was a pretty severe impetus to get to the sharks. 
And uh, I was confused that Lisa said something when she went into the water, you know, as she's getting into it and loving it now and, you know, nature, nature, fucking nature, right? And she says, <laughs> you can see for miles. And I'm, I'm thinking, you can see for miles? And I'm looking, I, it's just dark ocean. <laughs> what are you fucking seeing? You're just seeing blue uh, yes. and dark. I mean, it was it was almost like, you know, I mean, if Mandy Moore was a more accomplished actress, she probably would have been like, you want me to read this drivel? This makes no sense. Let me talk to the director, that which would be Johans or Jones or Jihad or whatever his yeah, name Jihad is. Yeah, Jihad Jones. That's who it is. G- it's, it's Jihad Jones. It's Johans. Uh, let's just make him, let's just call him Jihads because, uh, you know, I have that much disdain for this drivel movie. <laughs> but um, no, I, I kid, I kid. But uh, so... Th- an, an inexperienced lady and uh, an inexperienced two inexperienced people at life. These two young ladies are going to get in a shark tank and drop down into the water amongst uh, great whites. They're chum- They're actively chumming the water to to pull the creatures closer so they get their money's worth yeah. out of this eighty buck adventure that they're on. You know, so they put them in the cage. I think it would have been funny if if Matthew Modine's character said, "Wait, you guys got your scuba d- license, right? You got your diver's license." I'm kidding. Like you need cert- <laughs> certification. Get in that water. Let's make a, a white privilege gumbo out of you two <laughs> nitwits. The 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 sharks do show up eventually and move around the cage and look all creepy and stuff. And of course, they're CGI'd. Yeah, you know, I mean, this is going to shock you. They're CGI sharks. I think that's one of the big problems I had with it right away is like they're trying to play it straight-faced and we live in a world with two-headed shark attacks and sharknadoes <laughs> and robo-sharks and octo-sharks and man-hybrid sharks and, you know, like they've jump the sharks with the sharks so it's 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 almost kind of like you know i don't it, maybe if you had I, real sharks the cgi wasn't terrible but no. it was obviously cgi there was some parts where the cgi was really bad and then there's parts where it was so low-key that you're like okay that works uh, but other parts were just like okay okay that's ridiculous. Yeah. There's a problem with the lighting too, but you know, that's almost that's almost nitpicking at this point. But I do like what you said, jump the sharks with the sharks. That'll be the tagline of this episode. <laughs> <laughs> jump those sharks. <laughs> and this is uh, this is uh, going to shock you, but the next thing that happens is <laughs> Is and I know I almost had a heart attack. I was worried I'd have to go to the hospital. The fucking winch breaks and drops these assholes into the depths of the water. How far do they go though? I don't know. Um, I'm thinking 46.5 meters down, or oh, no, 47. Close. Oh, 47. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. it. Yep, they drop them. F- the the winch breaks. The cage drops into the ocean depths, and they drop 47 meters down. Yep, and uh, and at that point, you know, if you're gonna stick to any even vague kind of realism with this movie, you'd go like, all right, well, we're done with this feature because these ladies are dead. But no, we <laughs> we're not even to the midpoint yet. If I was Captain Taylor, I'd be like, uh, let's call the Coast Guard like now. I know. Let's remove any evidence that we've known these girls, and you know, like <laughs> bathe yourselves off because I'm sure they were all over the both of you two last <laughs> night. You filthy animals. <laughs> uh, so the so we also should note that the winch drops, and as well the the crappy rusted winch that held them up drops into the ocean with them. It lands on top of the cage and effectively locks them inside, wedges on top of the cage, so they can't free themselves from the top part or whatever (laughs) yeah and i'm bad at estimating the weight of things but this this is a big rusted heavy angular piece of steel it's got a way you know on the on the the conservative side uh, half a ton right yeah okay let's just keep that in mind (laughs) that it's on top of the cage and it's trapped them inside and so they're at the bottom of the ocean for i don't know how far 47 meters is that's another I, i do Oh, do you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How, how how does it relate in American? <laughs> Forty seven meters is approximate is approximately one hundred fifty four point two feet. So that's a pretty far distance, right? Yeah, it's pretty far. Uh, I'm trying to think. How um, how does that relate, like in a football field or a city <laughs> block? <laughs> well, you see, I'm looking at I'm looking at IMDb trivia trivia. I'm looking at IMDb <laughs> trivia. And it doesn't do that conversion, Clay. So don't ask me these fucking questions ever again. Let's move on. So I don't know is the, is the honest answer, but they're far down. And I tried to sound smart. 
but you blew it. <laughs> you fuck, it's a great way for your co-host to sabotage you. I apologize. <laughs> but okay. um, So they're, they're trapped in the bottom, and, you know, immediately the blonde gets in, it into her head that she needs to leave the fucking cage. Because why would you leave this thing that's built for your protection against sharks? Because, and they're foggy, uh, you know, kind of like reasoning for this is because they're not in range of the boat. And I'm thinking, right. what do they, they know that you're down there, you dummy. Yeah. They know that you're down there. Let them do their thing. Well, I, I, I this is where I can see the quandary between us. Cause I, I, I tend to empathize with the characters as I'm going through there. So as I'm watching this yet again and paying attention, I'm like, okay, they're fucked. <laughs> That's what, <laughs> yeah, like that would be my thought, die. you know? I'm yeah. like, okay, I'm dead. I'm just going to die down here. It's going to be a horrible, horrible drowning death. But, you know, they get the con- – Kate, the sister, gets the calm idea, and she frees herself from her uh, her oxygen tank and has to take off her mask briefly to get out of the cage because uh, the hole in the cage is too small for all that equipment. So she squeezes through, gets her equipment back on, and then swims up to around the 40-meter area to get com- comms with the boat. Right, and and then so she makes contact with him, I, and I can't remember the conversation, but it's like, hey, did you just drop off? Sorry, I was taking a huge bong hit, and I didn't realize that we lost you two. I I, I don't know why they needed to communicate with people at that point. It's that they're either going to call the coast guard and try to save them, or they're going to die. Right. And I mean, if I was really going to be a stickler about it, the impact would kill them. But we've already suspended disbelief enough at this point to go along with it. Yeah, and uh, experts have said that their <laughs> their longest time frame down there with oxygen at that depth would only be 15 minutes tops. Yeah, and we're not close to being 15 minutes done. So they they there's a whole lot of uh, <laughs> right. there's a whole lot of of reaching to do plot wise here. <laughs> so Captain Taylor tells her tells Kate to go back to the cage because it's safer from the sharks in the area and no shit. and also to preserve air. Duh. <laughs> um, one of the, one of the guys they met, Javier, I guess it's his name. Uh, he's yes. going to try to attempt to swim down with another cable to winch them, winch them back up. Yeah, he was like, just think of the amount of salacious activity that I can engage in after I save these women from the situation that I put them in. You know, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this is another part that was for me screamingly predictable. It's like Javi, why don't Javier should just kill himself and then tumble over the boat, the <laughs> the boat, while so the sharks can eat him and cause a momentary distraction because that's the only way Javier is going to be any good to these ladies. Yeah, exactly. We'll find that out later too. Oh no! I, I hope I didn't spoil it for anybody. <laughs> uh, so the we, Kate goes back to the cage. The, she gets back in into it. Uh, they, her and her sister, bullshit for a little bit, and then th- this is the most inane bullshitting. I did not care about this conversation at all. I'm like, okay, this is dumb. Just, just be quiet and don't talk. Conserve your air. And they didn't. They just kept talking. But yeah, and they established within the context of the movie that. We need to conserve our air. So, hey, remember that time when we were 12 and we went to Mississippi for that one day? It's not Mississippi, or is it? Was it Alabama? No, it's Mississippi. <laughs> just, just eating through oxygen. Eating through oxygen. And uh, they, they hear the boat leaving. And I don't know why this was even part of the movie, because it, this does not come into play ever again. They think the boat is leaving. They hear an engine crank up, and that's it. They, they, I think Kate swims back up to try to get in contact with the boat again, but she doesn't get any response. So they both think the boat is gone. Now, why the boat is gone, uh, why they, the boat moved, I have no idea. I think that they were going back to, to get another winch, like, <laughs> which, oh, God, it's just so stupid. I mean, like, like first they'd be like they'd be able to find them. It's the ocean. Yeah. You could you could drop like 10 cars into that exact spot, know your exact latitude, longitude, mm-hmm. and maybe find five of those cars. Yeah, like, you couldn't find I, – and I don't know shit about this, but I somehow know that's true. You know, like, it's, it's that hard to suspend disbelief with this thing. Right, and you bring up a good point. The, they could have gone back for a winch. I don't know. The, she mentioned the, down in the cage that, oh, I didn't even see them with another winch. How are they going to winch us out? So that may be a what what they've been doing by leaving. But you bring up a good point. The ocean is fucking huge, and you can tell the ghost guard, oh, search this grid area, <laughs> and uh, and they and they'd probably be like, 
<laughs> without putting their coffee down, they'd be like, how long have they been out there? Oh, they've been out there about 10 minutes. And it's like, all right, we'll be out there in a moment. Let me just finish this donut. Like they, <laughs> they're dealing with a couple of corpses that you're never going to find. <laughs> right. And, uh, the, I would only assume that the Coast Guard deep dive team, if there is even such a thing as that, I'm, I'm assuming there is. Yeah. Uh, they would have all that stuff down saying okay how much was in their air tanks uh, was what kind of nitrous mix was it uh how far down do you think they went blah 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 and they would do all the calculations and they're like oh you said that was about 15 minutes ago okay they're probably not alive anymore yeah they've been dead 13.5 minutes right. <laughs> <laughs> i just hope that they were able to say their tearful goodbyes to one another before they <laughs> ran out of oxygen and died yeah <laughs> In that so case, there is a certain amount of disbelief, and if you're not a diving expert or don't know anything about the Coast Guard, like, well, I mean, like me, but I like to look some of this shit up every once in a while just to see if something is true. The whole movie magic thing, if they're just bullshitting us. And yeah, it turns out there's a lot of bullshitting going on in this movie. But Oh, yeah. And I knew that without knowing much at all about the only thing I know about, uh, about this stuff is what you gain from just accidentally stumbling across a Jacques Cousteau thing. Yeah. But I will say that my suspense was suspended for a little bit of it. I, I, we we start... I see a shark kind of comes out of nowhere and attacks Kate, but she makes it back to the cage in time. As she talks to Taylor. Uh, the shark attacks the cage and almost bends it in half, almost breaking yeah. it. Yeah, like, ur, 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 I want these white women. They look so <laughs> delicious. And he's no, he's pushing his big old shark nose into it and bending the steel bars like the Incredible Hulk is trying to get in. And then he finally gives up. Oh, fuck it. I'll go eat a sea lion or something. <laughs> and he, he goes away. But, I mean, throughout the movie, they keep finding dumb reasons to leave the cage, come back to the cage. Leave the cage, get in a sense of pair, I'll come back to the cage. Just stay in the... You're going to die anyway. Stay in the cage. That's a good place to die. We start seeing some more little plot points arrive that... Pro that, pro that promotes them to get out of the cage once more. We see that Kate is almost out of air. Lisa starts to, uh, explains why Lisa explains this that they can't swim up because they they'll get the bends because they're too far down. They have to decompress as they go up. And so I guess the bends is a one way uh, proposition because they didn't get it when they plummeted down to the seawall. That that bugged me from the outset. But. Yeah, you'd think they'd have to go down slow and not. It, it works opposite, I would think, as well. You know, it, I mean, it's like they'd get the bends right after they realized that they had multiple broken bones and pulverized <laughs> organs. But, you know, it was it was tough for me to let go at this point. Uh, going back just a little bit, there was a little point in when they did land on the seafloor and you see Mandy Moore's or Lisa's mask and it has a little blood and a little water floating in there right at her lip. And I did feel a little claustrophobia when that happened. Yeah, uh, because the, the the way you hear like the sound in the back and, you know, it's almost like the shell shock scene from Saving Private Ryan, you know, her senses yeah. are out. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. you see the blood kind of coming out of her mouth and the, it looks like the water's rising a little bit in her mask. And I was like, oh, this is fucking crazy. It's kind of like um, it's kind of like reacting to the awful. I don't know why I jumped to this metaphor or this this comparison rather, but uh, like the you've seen the American version of of I think it was it was it was the Grudge, the American version of the Grudge, yeah. the, the, the terrible one. Sure. I found myself annoyed with the movie because I I kept jumping at the jump scares, <laughs> and I realized it's not because it's effective; it's because it's everybody feels that way you're you're just it, it's a it's a softball you know like yeah. it's 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 a total gimme yet like yes you feel claustrophobic because every human should it's a basic survival instinct and that's the the real base level thing that they're playing off of so i felt a little bit of that but it i didn't feel like it was a successful movie in any way because it's just like yeah that's how everybody should feel in that situation <laughs> sure sure <laughs> but it wasn't bad it wasn't bad um, so they see a flashlight out in the dark water, and they is that our friend Javier? Uh, they they say they say it's Javier looking for him, but uh, I, but there's like cage lights. There's lights around the cage at the bottom of the ocean. Did you notice that? I didn't even notice that there was cages. There was lights on the cage when they went down in the water, but apparently there are lights with them 
at 47 I, meters down. Yeah, I think I did, and only because you mentioned it. But yeah, it, it seemed like okay. I yes. don't remember. Maybe maybe they turn on after. <laughs> it's yeah. a very sophisticated cage. They needed to put some of that budget towards the winch and the, the, <laughs> the cable that held it on to the cage. So my question was: the, there are lights there because I was making these notes as I was, as I was watching the film. There's lights on the cage, but if that's a light from Javier trying to find him and he's pointing the, his flashlight towards them, why can't he see the light from the cage like they can see the flashlight? It was, it was just maybe, I don't know. It wasn't explained, but uh, we can move on. That's not a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, and I, I don't want to backtrack too much, but the, I, I just now remember there was one part in the movie like when, uh, you know, we're talking about suspension of disbelief, and that, that was real tough for me right from the outset because the skinny blonde girl gets out of the cage and this huge heavy winch, she just – She's able to just get it off of the cage, and it yeah. was squarely on top of it. You would need to <laughs> a hundred girls. If she could duplicate herself a hundred times, they couldn't move that fucking thing. So it, it, it's, uh, you know, I, I don't know that I'm being nitpicky or whatever, but it just seems like it, it was just hard to accept any of these things. Yeah, I was me. thinking, like, if they can't push it off with both of them pushing on the the door to the or the gate entrance, or the cage entrance, then how can one girl on top pulling on it make any difference? But I guess it did. Yeah, well, in the, she... In the movie's physics, at least. <laughs> she she grew the power of ten Lisas that day, or ten <laughs> Mandys, or ten uh, Chartreuses, or Claire's, or whatever the hell her <laughs> white girl name is. God, I hated these characters. <laughs> so the uh, Kate is running out of air. She wants to... So Lisa decides that she's gonna take a. She's finally gonna step up to the plate and leave the cage and go search, go after the light, thinking it's Javier, and she's gonna go searching for Javier. She, I think she finds part of him, doesn't she? Well, she finds the flashlight by she she. Okay, this is another part I did have a problem with the movie with. Uh, Kate <laughs> tells her to stay at the bottom of the ocean floor so she can stay because. Sharks attack from below. They won't attack down. I think that was her reasoning. So I don't know. I don't know how shark behavior is. This is something else I did not look up. I probably should have. But so she, Mandy Moore, Lisa crawls along the bottom of the ocean floor and she continuously goes towards the light. She gets attacked by the shark or one of the sharks and she avoids it, hides in the rocks and then continues on. <laughs> Uh, yeah, she hides like she's in the forest or something behind a rock. Like the like the shark is just a a random moose walking by. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. All it needed is classic Bugs Bunny music. <laughs> and uh, she comes across this giant abyss where the 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 sea floor gives way to just an empty ocean, and she sees the flashlight still floating in the floating in nothingness. So she goes and grabs it, and it's just just a flashlight. Uh, Javier isn't there. But she turns around, <laughs> and Javier just kind of shows up out of nowhere. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> and the shark comes and eats Javier. <laughs> Good. Good. Yeah. I'm, I hope he's full. I'm like, where were you, Javier? <laughs> Why would you I come mean, out of the ocean and just scare the shit out of her like that? Couldn't you just, like, make some motion? Like, blah, 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 I'm over here. Or have <laughs> well, the filmmakers and the writers treated the ocean, the ocean, like it's some kind of, of two-dimensional landmass where you can be like, oh, I, I, I took a left, but I now I'm turned around. Should I take another right? It's yeah. just icky, dark water. If you got... 10 feet away from that cage, you'd be fucked. Yeah. I would be. I, mean, I know I would be. I'd, I'd never find it again. I'd be like, uh, can you yell? Can you? <laughs> I thought the same exact thing when she headed out into the ocean. Then she actually did get turned around and she's like, I can't, I can't see. I'm lost. And I could actually feel that tension to myself because I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, you would definitely get lost. There's no way you're finding your way back. I mean, you, no. might, as, you might as well just swim up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I I heard a story from a friend of mine that, that like, they got stranded in the dark just on the road in some Tennessee town, and, and they got too far away from the car and couldn't find it. Right. You know, so it's like, you definitely do that underwater. Yeah, especially <laughs> since water moves, and it, you're buoyant, and you're going to be moving with it, so you may yeah, accidentally you, be you, caught into some kind of current that you don't even know about and be three miles away before you even know. 
Oh, it's it was so stupid. Yeah. But um, eventually, don't they, they at at some point they soon into the movie they get a, a replacement wench and and try to get them wench back up, don't they? Is that the the next kind of big pivotal uh, landmark in the movie? Yeah. So Lisa finds the wench cable that Javier was bringing with him on his body and takes it off and brings it back to the cage and she that she just so happened to find just because her sister was banging on a piece of metal because that's very directional underwater right yeah ting, for, ting, ting, for human ting. ears at least it's like um i don't know where the fuck this is coming from <laughs> <laughs> it's either coming from everywhere or nowhere <laughs> yeah it's not like you're a sea creature that you can hone in on that kind of stuff you know where humans our hearing doesn't work the same underwater it's I don't they know. Should have given but... them a friendly uh, dolphin friend. I, I would have accepted <laughs> that even more than what happened. Like, ah, Flipper is here, or Echo, if you're <laughs> for the Sega fans. A, a friendly Sega character that would be very <laughs> cute. So I, 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 I would, you know, this is another part where I was a little tension filled because I was like, oh, she got lost. What is she going to do next? And I thought her finding her way back to her sister like she did by sound echolocation or whatever the fuck was happening was a little radar is what it was yeah it took a little stretching of the disbelief system there to get into that yeah don't you remember the foreshadowing where they said remember when we were uh psychic as kids that'll never come back (laughs) okay so Better. okay yeah I, i i do want to mention that soundtrack and the sound design for the movie is really good uh, I I did like it. It it built a perfect amount of tension within the scenes. It wasn't too overbearing, and yeah, I think if anything, that that was probably one of the more platinum efforts in this whole thing. Well, it was you know none of it like visually. Everybody's got a good reel to to shop around to get their next gig. Like the cinematography was was pretty good. The the really overly kind of like OCD control that they that filmmakers have over the color palette and and the post production is kind of what ruins these movies for me because the color palette was so specific and so kind of like we're in Mexico and I'm like I don't remember I don't think Mexico looks like that yellow and red I mean it looks like Mars after the bombs drop <laughs> it does, yeah it did have a weird filter on it and you know what yeah. I watch a, I have like an HD 4k whatever tv here and uh, the dark the dark colors on a screen like that come out really weird so anything they i think lisa or kate had like a blue face mask on and it it looked like neon on my screen well it wasn't just like we've got a pretty old tv we haven't updated this tv because it still works and we've had it forever in technology terms and i noticed the same thing there was a weird kind of neon banding around around them and and the only reason i mention it sounds like we're being super technical and picky or something but it was it was really distracting it almost seemed like some kind of strange artifact that wasn't intentional but they just said well we that's all we got we <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I i it's why i bring it up too because it really pulled me out just a little bit from the movie but uh yeah well i was never really engaged other than hostile <laughs> my you know like i i should have have waited for a little while because you know not to, to to just jump back to a movie we've already reviewed but it's tough to go from 1920 london this bollywood epic to this <laughs> very boilerplate you know exactly what's going to happen movie it makes you judge it real harshly oh yeah yeah it's a big harsh judgment and i I think even come from myself who i actually enjoyed it to a point that i find myself now judging it more harshly than i thought i was going into this review (laughs) well you're talking about it with a cynical asshole so that that might (laughs) that might flavor your opinion (laughs) so lisa swims up to 40 meters yet again to kill tell captain taylor to uh she i should go back lisa puts the winch on the the cage and then swims up and tells captain taylor hey we are we're attached to go ahead and pull us up we're we're good to go so captain yeah. so taylor and does she should have been like thanks for helping lisa <laughs> <laughs> lisa hasn't done shit except cry and panic this whole time yeah so this is actually lisa she went out and did the the whole find the flashlight and get the winch from javier's body and so that's why i said before she's kind of stepping up out of her meek role and becoming the hero we're seeing that hero transformation that we're supposed to see in every film well i sense alien you know we've never been able to replicate it but we're gonna try every time (laughs) uh so they, they captain taylor 
starts pulling them up. And by the way, we don't see Modine at all during all of this. This is they don't cut back to the boat at all. It's all down in the water. No, he he got paid for it was like about you know ten percent uh, seeing him on screen and then ninety percent him doing voiceover work. And I, I'm pretty <laughs> sure that they just stopped recording his voiceover tracks as soon as he got too shit faced to actually <laughs> continue. <laughs> and I don't say that judgmentally. I, that's what I would have done. Yeah, I would have done the same thing. Yeah. Uh, but they start rising. The wind starts pulling them up. We see that Kate, the sister, is almost still almost out of air. And, yes. Uh, but wait, another problem gets thrown at the whole fucking situation because apparently this cable is made out of yarn or some shit. <laughs> I think they made it out of uh, out of licorice, like black licorice. Uh, they, <laughs> it just starts to unfurl, like yeah, like like a piece of of, of old yarn. And then these <laughs> these hapless people are dropped once again, and it's just like, oh, okay, they just they're dropped right back onto the seafloor. And this time they're actually injured a little bit. Yeah. So the cage the the cage wedges on top of Lisa's leg, and so she's pretty much stuck with the cage on top of her. And this is what we're gonna see several times through the movie that we see some kind of glimmer of hope, and then we realize it's nothing. You know, it's not hopeful anymore. Something tragic happens, and again, <laughs> we're hitting all those nice beats. All those nice beats. I'm telling you, if you just fed me the premise and I and I wrote out in bullet points what's going to happen, I'd I'd only be off by about four bullet points. <laughs> so Kate swims back up to call Taylor again to 40 meters, and he tells her he's sending down extra air tanks. <laughs> that he explains something I don't know, it's something called nitrous sickness or whatever. When they switch out tanks, it increases the nitrous or something in their system, and that's going to cause hallucinations. That plays a key role later. And he also explains yeah. that the Coast Guard is on the way with special deep sea rescuers. Yeah, and it was I, I was I was rolling at this point because it's kind of like now you got to make sure that you decompress when you come up. You got to have take five minute breaks, and you can't get nitrous sickness, and you're going to get eaten by sharks. But make sure you don't get the bends. <laughs> make sure you don't get those bends. I think by by a certain point, like I'm like, you know what? I get the bends. They they can treat me. I mean, if, yeah. the, if the Coast Guard's up there, I'll swim up to them. They can treat me. You can you can be treated for the bins. I know. And at that point, I would have just leveled with her. It's like, here's here's what's going to happen. You're either going to die or you're going to die trying. <laughs> so you need to make a choice, girl. This isn't fa a fair thing to lay on the, the in the lap of a 20-something. But <laughs> this is where we're at. This is what you get. This is what you get for going into the shark's hood and pissing around with the sharks. The sharks are gangsters. They don't fucking play that shit, man. This is not, you know, this is not Atlanta. Like, if you find yourself in the raw what seems like the wrong side of Atlanta you might be okay you might meet a nice person it's happened to me the ocean doesn't play that shit yeah. great whites will eat you they are gangster yeah they they are man eaters and i know there's a stigma against killing sharks and how they're they're shit. predators i'm like you know i'll kill that motherfucker if i try to Oh man, just arm me with a laser pointer or some kind of chainsaw, chainsaw nunchuck, something. <laughs> and that's what this movie needed at this point is some absurd kind of thing. And as much as I resent like the Sharknado movies for just being self-aware garbage, it's you know like it, you almost need something ridiculous to pull you out of the monotony and to, the predictability of these of this movie. <laughs> No, you're exactly right, and uh, we are starting to see that monotony getting shaken up yet again <laughs> as, as Taylor sends down the new oxygen tanks to replace both Kate and Lisa's tanks, and he also sends flares down with the tanks as well. Uh, Kate comes back to the cage. Kate kind of puts, gives herself some air and puts her tank on, and then she comes back with a spare oxygen tank, but a shark comes and patrols the area, and eventually... Yeah. I smell some white girls over here that need to be uh, <laughs> need to be ed edited. I, I think she's. I remember her scrambling back into the cage as as jaws smash their way towards her. It, it was. It all got pretty mushed together in my memory by this point. And I promise I paid attention. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, by this point, uh, Kate has already swam out. She grabs the tank. She's coming back with the tanks and the flares, and she's close to the cage. But Kalisa's telling her, "Don't come. Wait. Just keep wait." 
Oh, just keep waiting. Just wait there, and uh, <laughs> the shark will leave or something like that. But Kate says, <laughs> suddenly you're an expert in shark behavior. Where were you? <laughs> where were you? The moment you needed to say, let's not get in the water with those sharks. That's the best way to deal with that. But, because uh, sharks eventually get tired when, when they know that food is around, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, I'm, not, I'm not really into this thing. I'll go eat something else. No, that's not what a shark thinks. Yeah, these these weird floundering, uh, pasty seal creatures are, are tiring out. I'm going to leave them alone, even though they look <laughs> de- just delicious. They look like <laughs> they look like they taste like that. They would taste like chicken breast or something. <laughs> no, sharks have a whole lot of interaction with chicken, but instinctively, you know that you'd like it. <laughs> Uh, Kate says she's going to make a break for it. And, of course, before she can get to the cage, the shark comes and grabs her and presumably eats her. Yes, but in- instead, I guess he took her off to some dark corner to lay eggs down her throat. So yeah, she- and to spawn more great white babies to come out and torment <laughs> them. <laughs> Which would have made a vastly better movie if her chest burst open and there was shark hybrids came out. I would, you know, I'd, I'd go with it. <laughs> Lisa freaks out. And, of course, you know, she sees her sister get dragged off by a shark. She tries to communicate with her, can't get in touch with her. And she sees the extra tank, and she's like, oh, I'm not going to die down here. She says it. Let me do my <laughs> let me do my Mandy Moore impression, or my Lisa impression. Yeah. I'm not going to die down here. <laughs> Fuck this shit. That's, I think that's how what I said. I think she <laughs> said something to that effect. They got their one fuck in for this. I think, think you get a one fuck for, for, for PG-13 movie. I don't know. I was paying attention at that point. I was just trying to perfect her accent. At when she well, the, she, she, she manifests a spear gun out of thin air, doesn't she? To, yeah. To I, don't, I, think that might have, I think that might have come from Javier, but it, that was never really established, except maybe in some kind of weird quick cut. But yeah, there's a harpoon down there. Yeah, because I guess he's going to get – he's going to, be, you know, like <laughs> get some free grouper on his way into getting eaten. What's a spear gun going to do <laughs> against a creature with rows of powerful razor-sharp teeth? It's going to do nothing. You're going to piss it off, if anything, and it's going to eat you faster. It's just to make you feel better, Clay. He yeah, wants- <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a security gun. It's a security gun, <laughs> But we have this very standard kind of just out of reach moment where she's running out of oxygen. She's trying to get the the um, the canister of air, and uh, you can tell I'm really into diving because I, I know all <laughs> the I know all the vernacular. That's the technical air. term, canister of air. <laughs> the the <laughs> the jar of breathe. It's and, like the uh, goat orchard that you mentioned in the. <laughs> Uh, my brain, my brain doesn't work well, but it works quickly. So, uh, so she uses the spear gun, which she somehow knows how to use as a totally inexperienced diver, to retrieve the canister of air, and and she's able to get it hooked up. Also, being inexperienced, and just in the nick of time, gets uh, some some of that vital oxygen so that she can exit the cage and go save her sister, who is totally not eaten. Uh, <laughs> totally not eaten, and you know she is. Lisa has cut her hand on the on the spear gun. Oh, I'm glad you mentioned it. Yeah, yeah she's bleeding out from you know a, a, a cut, a fresh cut in her hand. Yeah, so she's she's got her leg wedged. She's she's got her hand is bleeding. She finally gets the oxygen tank on, you know, hooked up to her, and she starts hearing Kate over the radio now. I'm so cold, Lisa. I've been hurt really bad. That's my Lisa impression. I've been working on that one all day too. <laughs> oh, it was worth it. I'm glad you, you prepared. Thank you me. prepared more than I did, dude. dude I, I've been taking a lot of acting classes for this episode just so I can get all this stuff down. Yeah, you got a you you've got a, a very fruitful career in front of you. <laughs> oh, so. I'm trying to think, how does Lisa get the goddamn cage on her leg? <laughs> I I think she, um, what happens is we see a can of spinach come down from, <laughs> <laughs> from the boat. She eats it, and then we get the classic fanfare, da 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 which is public domain, so they didn't have to, have to pay for it. And she bends the cage, the bars apart, and she goes to find her sister. And as we've established, the inky 
just can't see a foot in front of you blackness of the ocean. And this is experienced divers like, I'm going to find you, Lisa. It's like a fucking how, you know, like and she's keep in mind, she's bleeding steadily. She's just oozing Lisa juice out of her, and, her right hand. And I assume her leg is injured from being on crushed underneath a heavy metal cage. Yeah, so I think she willed that in that injury away, but you know she's she's floundering around and she manages to find her, doesn't she? Uh, the, she she calls out to Kate to look for the flashlight as she spins it around, and Kate weakly says over the radio that she sees the light, and so Lisa goes and swims toward her and finds her <laughs> bleeding <laughs> on the ocean floor. Just describing it, just you describing it, <laughs> just illuminates how bad it is. Like, okay, what? Do you see the light? Yeah. Okay, I'm what, coming that, that way. way? <laughs> <laughs> Are you east, west, north, south, or one of the uh, other directions that we can be in 360 degrees in the fucking ocean? Who knows? They should have done yeah. the warmer and colder game. Warmer, yeah. warmer. No, no, colder. You're going farther away. You're good. You know, I'm just going to die. We <laughs> just gonna... died here. It'd be fine. <laughs> I'm glad he broke up with you because you're boring and you didn't put out. That's why he broke up. That'd be funny if they just got ultra catty right before their moment oh, of death. Yeah. I never like you. Your farts smell like sulfur. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. The things we could do if we, we could rewrite rewrite these films, man. Oh, I've got a, I've got a stellar idea for one. In fact, I almost want to pen it, but we can get to that at the end. <laughs> So flares, they, they, they have this, so Lisa grabs Kate and she decides, okay, I'm going to start swimming up with you. And so they start swimming up and she finally gets in contact with Captain Taylor and he says, oh, well, you can't come up. She's like, no, fuck it. I'm going to come up. And he's like, okay, we're going to have to do it slowly to decompress as you, uh, as you rise. And uh, apparently flares ward off sharks. I had no idea that that yeah it's, it's like citronella to um mosquitoes or you know <laughs> yeah just light a or candle most, out in the ocean my neighbors <laughs> <laughs> it's like a shark repellent out in the middle of the ocean i guess yeah yeah it's just you know i mean i i avoid them like somebody with a, a crazy religious sign <laughs> and Same with sharks <laughs> And they start rising, and the they have to stop to decompress for a few minutes. And one of the flares goes out very quickly, I must add. I, I thought flares lasted a little bit longer. But that being said, they try to get another flare. It drops, and then they pull out their last flare. And she, yeah. Kate or Lisa struggles to light it, and they light it. And for some reason, the sharks are just hovering around them with their <laughs> they're just open. waiting like they were all going like man they're gonna be so freaked out when that flare goes up yeah and it was it was like oh boogity boogity oh shit they're right there right right there he's right not even there yeah. he's, he's just hovered, like you said he's hovering birdemic style because what happened is they bought <laughs> the sharks from the same suite that you get the birdemic okay. birds <laughs> And the 1920 birds from it all comes, a, it, you know, if you pay $20 extra, you get the shark package. So it must and be all in the, like the Adobe software suite, like the, the effects suite, like in 13 Demons. and. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just dumb. You could pay 13 bucks for the one program or 50 bucks for all of them. So, yeah, they got the, they got the, they, <laughs> they popped for the shark package. So this is the point where finally... They ditch their stupid weight belts and start <laughs> swimming to the surface as fast as they can. Da bends be fucking damned. Yeah, they like fuck these bends. I, you know what? I'll, I'll, <laughs> I won't remember full sentences and I'll look all stroked out on one side, but I'm making it out of this fucking ocean. <laughs> they surface and they see the boat, and of course, no one's paying attention on the boat, and they have to yell for a little bit. And finally, <laughs> uh, the geniuses throw them a life preserver. Like, oh, hey, yeah, he throws it one-handed because he's actively eating a sandwich at this point. <laughs> and uh, they grab it on the life preserver, and the, the tension starts building because you're like, oh, well, I want to get out of the water, too, and I know they wanted to get out of the water. And before you know it, Lisa is pulled down into the water by getting bit on the leg by another shark. We think, and oh, I stood no. and cheered. I did. I stood <laughs> and cheered. I'm like, yes, let's score one for the shark. So he he pulls her down into the water, and she fights. I think she jams a thumb into his eyeball, and blood comes out. Is am I remembering correctly? Well, I mean that that, that happens. That's let's just say it happens because she get, it comes back up, and she gets to the boat again, and then the shark comes back up and grabs her yet again and pulls her down, and she fights it off by jabbing her thumbs into the eyes of the shark. <laughs> this time he's wearing two eye patches. <laughs> 
<laughs> and they, they pull the girls up into the boat and they start applying I guess, first aids and leeches, leeches and tying off tourniquets. And she starts saying, we made it, Kate, we made it. And she looks Clear. at her. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. And she started, she looks at her, at least looks at her hand and she sees the blood that stripping from her palm kind of wavering out into the air as if it's in water and not in not in actual gravity and we start realizing that this is just one big hallucination dream that Lisa's having I got it I got to hand it to him a very effective part of the movie we realize that the big twist was that she just hallucinated her whole rescue and as bad as that sounds and and it's only it's only good because it's surrounded by so much bad it that was it was a pretty good twist I, I thought it was pretty effective for me I, I yeah. felt like oh she's been down there the whole time she's fucked it's <laughs> it's over she's doomed yeah, ironically, the every I've read reviews on the move, movie, and everyone complained about the ending, but I thought it was very fitting. No, I liked it. I liked it, but they fucking ruined it by having her get rescued. Yeah, and then they had to like uh, the the actual SWAT team, <laughs> the the Coast Guard, you know, the the you know like reinforcements come in and they rescue her, and she's fucking alive i guess lisa's good and dead though no I mean, kate kate's dead kate's dead good yeah, lisa's alive okay. yeah yeah <laughs> lisa I is mean, our mandy moore mandy moore can't die so they they no, had to, they had to rescue her. her it's written into her contract she doesn't <laughs> unfortunately she didn't have her lawyer pen anything about having to look at harvey weinstein's pee pee as we already <laughs> mentioned but uh yeah that was that was 47 meters down i i resented it from the outset and through the duration <laughs> i felt about 47 meters down it was so it, it was just so banal and predictable and by the numbers and you know i i know that this is not a good impulse and i know and and uh, you know like you watch old movies you watch old horror movies now yeah. and the level of unapologetic objectification of the actresses is is disgusting and you you kind of like god i can't believe we always thought that this was okay but it's a hard thing to let go of when you're watching a horror movie and the first thing that you see is that it it it's going to be a shark movie all right that you, that comes with its own baggage but it's it's like if it's a shark movie okay there's yeah. a part of your brain whether you're going to say it out loud or not to where it's like oh, it's a beach movie there's going to be a lot of uh, half clothed beautiful women walking around I'm a man I can't apologize for it but you know but you know you're not even going to get that because this this thing is a PG-13 movie so you're not even going to get the reprieve of just a, you know kind of built in nudity in this, right. in this movie so I'd be that as it may it doesn't necessarily make it a better movie or a worse movie but it's you know I mean it, it, it gets you through it if it's if it's that predictable <laughs> well I, yeah I tend to I tend to be a little more a more, little bit more forgiving of the movie it was it was I mean it followed I, I, I know I kind of made fun of the entire thing as following <laughs> the beats of a of storytelling 101 but yeah. it was it was effective for me I thought the ending the the trick ending was pretty effective and i i had already suspected by that point that she was probably hallucinating already because there was already already some clues that were uh, shot at us before that um i yeah i i nitpick some things and there it's certainly not a perfect movie and i wish it could have been something completely different you know maybe a lot more gore um but i th as far as making me feel you know some tension and anxiety because i do have this fear of drowning and i think that's probably every human so <laughs> or being eaten by sharks which you know i i don't like going in the ocean so this is another kind of thing that's why i love shark movies just because i hate sharks and i hate the ocean and i like to be scared so these are perfect uh, outlets for me and yeah. it was it, it was a it was an average movie it wasn't the best but it certainly wasn't the worst thing i'd ever seen yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, I I hear you. It's just like I've seen movies. We've already seen movies like Open Water. That that and I've talked to so many people that just had so much contempt for Open Water, the same way I do for Forty Seven Meters Down. I liked Open Water. Oh, I loved you, Open Water. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was, you know, it wasn't it wasn't about sharks. It was about the last day of your life, you yeah. know. And 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 it may not be a, a very you know kind of special 
special last day. You may not learn anything. It may not be, you know, kind of all that eventful. Same way that, that the movie Elephant worked for me. It's, 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 it's a movie about the last day of your life. It may end violently. It may end unexpectedly. But it, it's, it's this poignant kind of, you know, look at, at, at your last day. And it, I couldn't take anything away from this. They didn't give me anything with the characters that I could, I could latch onto. And the poor actors had the same problem. Like, yeah. Oh, you're going through a breakup. That's, that doesn't tell me anything. Who are these people? Yeah. I mean, this was just, this was a tame, this was a tame action movie pretty much. Uh, and yeah, it was hard, but it was a, it was, it was tame. It was for the masses, pretty much. They needed money. They threw it out there. It made its money back, and I, that's what mattered. That yeah, and that's that's why I resent it too yeah. much. Is because that that shows through in every frame of the thing. It's like you can tell that that's what it is. It's just a property, and we're gonna we aren't gonna take any chances. The exact same thing. The exact thing that you know is gonna happen is what happens. And PG thirteen or otherwise, it's like well there's no real tension we're gonna we're even gonna pull back from the from the genuine tension because we don't really want you to be that scared it's a it's a movie where you're supposed to be scared <laughs> if it's not effective then why make it right yeah yeah I, I i i went into it as i as i said in my little caveat with a, a more uh you know kind of antagonism than it probably deserved but you know i was i, I it deserved I, I think it deserved uh quite a bit but you know we see things a little bit different differently on it i like to not have to think a lot sometimes with these movies so i i had to think a lot with 1920 and 1920 london and i know that sounds weird but i had to read subtitles i had to understand the world that they were living in and this one i felt a little bit of relief because i could just sit back watch it and be slightly entertained and not have to think i could just open my mouth and let the drool come out (laughs) i respect that it's like it shouldn't you shouldn't have to work with your entertainment it shouldn't be a homework assignment yeah. to be entertained but um I, I couldn't help but make up my own movie in my head that i would have liked a whole lot more they never would have made it because it's it's vile but i thought that they should have had a third character cindy and it's, it wasn't a sister it was one of their friends and they and cindy wants to just stay at the resort she doesn't want to go and they're like cindy what are you staying at the resort for and she's like i want to hook up with a bunch of guys and they're like you're such a horse and you suck, you know, and they, they yeah. slut shame her. And then they run off to get bitten and chewed on and, and die of asphyxiation and, and the bends and all that. And meanwhile, she's Cindy is back at the resort hooking up with multiple strangers. Sipping just Mai Tais. A, sipping Mai Tais, just in a piggy pile of flesh. <laughs> and the movie ends, like the movie ends with, with our heroes, Lisa and Claire, on <laughs> bleeding Kate. to death. Kate, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> and they're they're on the boat, bleeding out, and they've got about 1.5 limbs between them, and they're gurgling in their own blood. And then we cut to Cindy, who's on the beach, smiling, <laughs> sipping a mimosa with one of her many lovers throughout the movie, rubbing her shoulders. And then she smiles, and then the credits roll, and and we learn that. You shouldn't go hang out with sharks because you're that's stupid, and you shouldn't slut shame your friend because you know she's <laughs> she's having fun. <laughs> that is phenomenally amazing, and I'm hoping any any film consultants who need, <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to promote you, dude, because you, you get Clay well, onto your team to give you some script supervision or help you write we're 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 in this together jason and i are a team and we're going to write the script for you but we need funding so we're going to get this kickstarter (laughs) going and it's going to be a hard r rating Uh, if there's and if there's anything above nc 17 plus that's going to be the rating of the movie it's going to be vastly better i love it uh, yeah yeah it'll be a better movie all right so what do we have coming up uh, on our next episode Next, we have Six Souls starring Julianne Moore, and um, I'm curious. I'm curious. It's a movie about uh, she's a psychologist, and her patient has multiple personalities. And that's about all I know about it. The trailer, as most trailers tend to be, it was pretty effective. Trailer editors need to get a lot more credit for (laughs) making good trailers. Yeah, I'll be interested in checking this out, and hopefully we can get a good review in next week. That's right. That's right. So you are Clay. 
I'm Clay, and you are Jason. And I am Jason, and this is Cinematic Suffering. Thank you, everyone, for joining us on another episode, and we will see you later. Peace. Hey, guys, just a few plugs and shout-outs before we end this episode. Clay is an extremely talented and twisted comic artist, and you should visit his pride and joy, hboys.com. That's H-B-O-Y-Z dot com. If you're a fan of death and black metal... Check out Jason's band Gravehill on all social media platforms, as well as his doom metal project, Stygian Crown. Music was provided by Face X Hugger. Check out Face X Hugger on Bandcamp and Twitter for more synthwave horror-themed music. Questions, comments, and hate mail should be directed to our Twitter account, at Cinematic Suffer. Thanks for listening.